Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is just going to be a very brief video, a very brief channel update, just to keep all of you guys in the loop. Um, tomorrow, which is Thursday, September 14th, I believe, um, at 10 a.m., Angie Tillman and I from The Fickle Chickle we are going to be going live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time to discuss the Barbie movie, which I finally saw and I really, really love. So we're going to talk about the Barbie movie. We're going to talk about Hollywood. We're going to be talking about junk conspiracy, all that kind of stuff tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for a live show. Now, I'm kind of a dumbass when it comes to... Um, technology so it's amazing that i actually figured out how to simulcast with angie but the one thing i still don't know how to do is how to pre-schedule it to actually come on the live to match up with the pre-scheduled live so i'm not going to pre-schedule this it'll just go live at 10 o'clock in the morning so if you're able to join us for that live please do so if not no big deal um we're still practicing with it anyway it will be up for you to watch later but once again we will be talking about the Barbie movie and junk conspiracy and all that kind of stuff. Now, with that being said, tomorrow, 10 a.m., the live, that will be the last episode on my channel until Tuesday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, there will be four days where there's not going to be any videos on my channel. This is because I am heavily dealing with shadow banning right now. And so I was advised to let my channel rest for a few days just to kind of let the algorithms reset themselves. Now, I do understand that my shadow banning is very different than most people's shadow banning because I am dealing with other nefarious things. But with that being said, I'm going to rest it for about four days. So the next video after Thursday will, or yes, the next video after my live with Angie on Thursday will be on Tuesday of next week, which I believe is, let me look at the calendar quickly. That will be the 19th of September. Now, other things I want to talk about, because we I, I kind of alluded to this uh, last week and everybody said, yes, they wanted me to talk about it. So I thought I would just briefly talk about it. Now, I have done videos on this before, which I will link down in the description box below. But I wanted to talk about illness and the human body. And one thing we, we know, we know that we've been lied to literally about everything. We know that. One of the big things we've also been lied about is to about is sickness. And this is coming from Eastern philosophy. And this is also coming from places like the Law of One and the Cassiopeians. Illness and sickness within a human population is absolutely necessary for ascension. Okay. If we look throughout the history that we know, we know that after every great plague, after every great outbreak, we look at the Black Death, all that kind of stuff. If we look historically, when all of these real, real issues with health arose, what happened immediately after that historically? Revolutions happened. The Renaissance happened. When we are leveling up as human beings, we are leveling up in our consciousness what has to happen is a course correction within our energetic psyche of patterning, right? So when we are in a human body, the human brain, the cognitive brain picks up on patterns. That's everything. That's how we survive is our brain will start to pick up on patterning. Even if we're aware of it or not, that's what it's doing, okay? When our brain starts to process certain patterning, it then amplifies in the mind field which is the body once that patterning has shifted once there is a recognition of a new patterning that information then gets filtered back into the mind field and what has to happen is in order to make way for the new patterning the old patterning has to go right so how do we get rid of old patterning we burn it right? It's called, that's why exercise is so important. It's because when you're exercising, you're bringing heat into the body, which is then moving. And it's kind of like a compost pile, right? It, it's removing, it's burning up the old patterning so that new patterning can be healthily there. So exercise is one way and also sickness. 
And we, we talked about this, as you'll see in the video down below, I talked about this is a common, common, very well known concept in the Eastern philosophy. And in my lineage, we call it the yoga fever. It's very, very common for people to start practicing yoga consistently. And when I say practicing yoga, I don't mean they're going to a class once a month or once a week. I mean, consistently, like five, six days a week, they're practicing. After a bit of time, what tends to happen is people will then come down with a fever. Now, Guruji used to get very excited about this because when you got a fever, that meant that the practice was working that something was detoxing out of your system. Now, with that being said, if you have a fever that's really high, go, go, absolutely go and, and seek medical treatment. But if, you're, if you have a low grade fever and you're exercising a lot, that means the exercise is working. And I've noticed a lot of people get very freaked out by this, but this is just common knowledge when it comes to spirituality. You're not going to just start exercising, start doing yoga or start running consistently and not have change. Change isn't always going to be rainbows and butterflies. You're not just all of a sudden going to wake up with a six pack and feel great. No, you're going to go through soreness. You're going to go through the fevers. You're going to go through the process, the alchemical process of changing of patterns. Now, with that being said, yes, I have dealt a lot with the yoga fever in my whole life. And my, my, my whole life as a yoga, 17 years I've been practicing yoga. Off and on, I've dealt with this yoga fever. But something recently happened to me last week where I got really, really sick. And um, I wanted to talk about that because I do believe that I was leveling up, that there was a huge, a huge level up that happened to me while I was sick. And my um, understanding, my education would also indicate that's what happened. So uh, about for about nine days, I had a fever. And I laugh and say, I the last time I was that sick, um, I was in India. And I was rescuing dogs out of a gutter. And I um, ended up ingesting accidentally, not on purpose, but accidentally human feces. And this got me incredibly sick. Like I was in the hospital in India. I was throwing up. It was coming out of every everywhere. I was swollen. Um, I ended up flying home. This is towards the end of my trip. I flew home and I went to the doctor here in the United States. And the public health department actually called me. I had to be interviewed by the public health department because it was a issue having to do with human feces. So they wanted to make sure that it wasn't an outbreak here in the United States, but that actually I had gotten it in another country, obviously not contagious. Um, and so I could rest assured that yes, it, it, I, it, in India, I got it in India, but I was very, very, very sick. And that was probably the, um, most painful sickness I've ever been through. I remember just lying in my bed in the hospital and crying because my body was just in so much pain. And looking back on that, I've had many healers, many spiritual people tell me that that was necessary karmically for me to ingest that feces because my body needed a major detox. That feces that I accidentally ingested was a karmic agreement energetically so that I could detox old patterning. And of course, this was right before lockdown. This was right before um, everything shifted for all of us. So that makes sense to me that, okay, now looking back on that, I can say, yeah, that, that was a heavy detox for me. Well, the same thing kind of happened this last week or week and a half ago. Um, no, it was not from human feces, but I got a very, very bad virus. I, um, my body, you know, when you get uh, fevers and your body hurts, my body ached, like it just ached. I was laying in my bed and just feeling the the blankets on top of me was hurting my skin. Um, I went like a whole week without washing my hair because it hurt to touch my scalp. Um, that's how sick I was. And, um, and now I know because I feel so much better now that something detoxed. So, and I kind of figured that out like halfway through the fever. When I first realized I had a fever, I thought it was just a basic yoga fever and I was going to be fine in a couple of days. But when it lagged on, I actually realized that something major was detoxing out of me.
All right. And so I wanted to bring that up with the ASEA as well, because as you guys know, ASEA, who is our sponsors on this channel, who makes this channel available and free for everybody who's watching right now. And I actually truly, truly believe in ASEA. I absolutely believe in ASEA. It, um, I've been offered many sponsorships on this channel, believe it or not, when you reach a certain. So legally speaking, from what I understand, you are considered a public person by law once you reach 10,000 followers on a certain platform. It doesn't matter which platform. As long as one of your platform has 10,000 subscribers or followers, you're by law considered a public person person. Now, I didn't know that until I had to know that when I was dealing with the police department from this crazy telegram cult that thinks that they're all secret military people and holy shit, that's a whole other story. But in dealing with the police department and the detectives who are working with me and the police department that's protecting me, I did find out that that is the public uh, person number and that then changes the way law enforcement protects you because once you are considered a public person, you are then considered easier to find. So when people start threatening you, like I've gotten some major, major threats against my um, my body, my body, I've been threatened bodily harm um, by this Telegram group. Um, because of that, law enforcement reacts differently because I am considered a public person, so it makes me easier to find than if I were um, a private, considered a private person. So anyway just a uh, long story short so as a public person when you have that that when you're considered to be legally an in, like a, a public you have influence basically you get a lot of people who want to sponsor your channel and for anybody who's starting a youtube channel i will tell you sponsorships are the best thing to do for you financially that's what's really going to help you uh, financially to be able to continue to do your channel way more than AdSense, way more than any of that stuff. But but for me, because of the material that I cover on my channel and because we are trying to deep dive and figure out the truth of things, we're seeking the truth, I've always been very, very, very careful or tried to be very careful with who I do business with. And so a lot of the sponsorships that I have been offered before ASEA, I turned down because there was something about the company that I... For some reason, their integrity and my integrity, for whatever reason, just didn't align. But with ASEA, I really felt drawn to this company when it was offered to me, um, mainly because the owner of, of this is the only company that has a, a, a legal, the, the, the legal um, equation, whatever you call it, the recipe for the redox system. So they're the only co company that has this actual formula, there we go, formula for redox. And because of that, the person who found the, the figured it out was offered uh, incredible amounts of money from the big uh, Zabardi Duda companies. And he, this was going to be generational wealth. We're talking like, you know, like the Coca Cola family type wealth, the Johnson and Johnson type wealth. And he said no, because he realized that if he were to take this deal, deal and he would were to sell the formula over to the Zapperty Doodahs, then they they would the Zapperty Doodahs would then um, shelf it so that people couldn't get it, and we need it. And I have been on the ASEA Redox now for probably about six months. I'd have to go back and double check that, but it has significantly improved my quality of life. Um, it, it, everybody talks about my hair. My hair is growing. I mean, I have thick hair anyway. I didn't even dry my hair this morning. I mean, it is growing like crazy. It is so freaking thick. Um, it is there. I've, I've already, you know, I put a little bit of straightening stuff in it to keep it from being super, super out there, but I have so much hair and it's just growing even thicker now. My nails are growing like, like crazy. I feel like I look younger. I feel I feel like I am younger. Um, I'm 40 years old. For those who are new to the channel, I am 40 years old. So I'm kind of at that hinge age where I'm not young, but I'm not old. But around 40, from what I've understood from my colleagues in Ashtanga Yoga, is around 40 is when you start to have to give postures back, when you do start to notice changes. Well, that hasn't happened to me. In fact, my practice has gotten even stronger. My practice has gotten back to the point 
where it was before I broke my sacrum back in 2016. And it's a lot of it has to do with the SIA. Actually, most of it probably has to do with the SIA because as I've said, I've been doing this practice for 17 years. Now, with that being said, with the redox system, what a redox system is, is it's a cellular communication system between your cells. So it's like most of us have a smartphone, like my iPhone, right? Most of us have a smartphone. It's like a little computer in your pocket. I can Google anything I want. I have the whole world's worth of information right here in my hand. Well, that's great. It's fantastic. But if I don't have signal, it means nothing. It's just a, it's just a brick of technology that means nothing if I don't have signal. So that's what happens to us in the human body. As we get older, especially after we go through puberty, our signaling system, our redox system starts to decrease. So like a child, a small child, when they fall off their bike and skin their knee, it doesn't take long for their body to heal itself, right? Very quickly. It's because they have a lot of redox. The, cell, the cells are able to communicate back and forth to immediately start to heal the body. But as we get older, that signaling, that signal becomes weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So if an 80 year old falls off of the bike and skins his knee, it could end up falling off of a bike for an 80 year old could potentially be deadly, right? Because the body isn't as resilient at that age as it was when it was younger. But with the redox system, we're bringing that resilience back to the body. Now, with that being said, with my sickness that I had last week, I want to clarify this again. Nothing in this world can stop you from getting sick when you need to detox. Nothing in this world is going to stop you from getting sick when you are ascending, when you are rebooting. To have a world without sickness means that you're in a world of death because there's no evolution. So when I got my 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 sickness a couple of weeks ago, I continued to do the ASEA like I regularly did to help support my body in that process, but allow the process to happen. And that is one thing that's amazing about the ASEA as well. You know, with the zipper de doo companies, they're trying to convince you that you should never get sick, which is not the point of evolution. That's not the point of change. If we never got sick, we would never have a renaissance. If we never got sick, we would never have an industrial revolution. Sickness is necessary. And so since the ASEA is an all natural supplement that helps the body naturally do what it's supposed to do, it absolutely allowed my body to be sick when it needed to be sick, when it needed to detox. And it was there just to simply support my body as it was going through that process. Now, as I started to get better, when I started to feel myself slowly getting better, the ASEA really came in handy because that helped me again move into that new state of health. Now, at this point, I feel like I'm totally back to normal. I feel clear headed again. I have energy again. And I am so grateful to ASEA for being that crutch for me as I moved through a necessary evolutionary process in my own ascension, in my own elevation. And so with that being said, I just want to reiterate because a lot of I've gotten that question a lot with you guys who are awesome and you're doing the shadow work challenges and you're working out every day. I've gotten that question so many times. Oh, my God, I was doing Marnie Alton for two weeks and all of a sudden I got a fever. Oh, my God, I started running and then boom, I got a fever. What's going on? Well, what's going on is that your alchemy, your work is paying off because you've now triggered your body to detox. And so I wanted to reiterate that. I don't want you guys to be afraid of being sick. Now, again, if, it, if your fever gets really high, then absolutely go to the doctor. When I, when I ingested that fecal matter and my fever got really high, I absolutely had to go to the doctor. I had to get fluids, all that kind of stuff. So going to the doctor isn't necessarily going to interrupt the evolution process. But if you can avoid going to the doctor, if it's like a low grade fever, then just, you know, drink a bunch of fluids, lay in your bed for a moment, let your body do what it's got to do and let yourself evolve. But I know that um, in the Western world, we, 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 we have this very weird way of seeing um, our health. Like we should always, 
it's just not it's not realistic in the western perspective nor is it the way that our bodies were intended to be okay and that's why i keep saying like this is the closest thing to a med bed is the asia because it's supporting your body listen if there was a bed that you just got into that took over and did everything for you then there would be no point in being human the point of being human is to experience everything of that humanness to go through the evolutionary cycle of change because remember as thoughts said the emerald tablets because we only know life because we know death if we had a bed here that was able just to keep extending our life and like made it so we didn't have to actually experience the bodily functions then we would stop creating there would be no more renaissance there would be no more evolution your body is capable of healing itself if you allow it the process to heal itself if you don't interrupt it and yes that process can be very uncomfortable but spirituality itself is very uncomfortable i have a huge issue you know there's so many people who are new to spirituality and they think just because they've they've read one book or they've heard one lecture or they've been to one yoga class that all of a sudden they're knowledgeable in spirituality and that's just not the case and they'll, they'll go out there and say light and love light and love honey light and love doesn't come till the very end when you first start your spiritual journey it's going to be a lot of darkness and a lot as we said on aquarius rising africa on monday it's going to be a lot of mummified shit that you're going to have to like crack open and look at that's part of spirituality that's part of the contraction of darkness and light you can't know joy until you've known sorrow you can't know light until you've seen darkness it's like one of my favorite uh quotes i think it was john lennon who actually said this a religious person is a person who has never seen hell a spiritual person is a person who's been to hell and back again right you have to see that in order to understand the opposite the opposing force of that and so again i just wanted to encourage you all to keep going if you find yourself getting the yoga fevers if you find yourself getting a fever from now 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 and again it's nothing to freak out about it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong it actually means that you're doing something quite right all right and if you again the asia is amazing 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 if you would like more information about the asia how it can help you in your ascension process how it can help support your body as your body moves through the uh the curse of time as you will as we move through this timeline if you need that support you can text bryce info to 321-216-8047 all that information is down in the description box below um, you can either just purchase the product or if you want to become a part of the, the business, you absolutely can do that as well. When you text that number, you will speak to Jay and then Jay will either put you in touch with Hillis or he'll help you. And you can work out with either Hillis or Jay what works best for you, what your financial situation is like, what your budget is like, ways that you can get a discount on the product all that kind of stuff you can talk to them about that and both jay and hillis will work with you to figure out which option is the best for you and your situation and your life now the another good thing about asia too is that if you do asia for the supplement for 30 days and you don't feel any different you're not happy with the product they will give you a full refund, no questions asked. I also love the supplements, the vitamin supplements. Um, when you pop open, especially the source, the green bottle, when you pop it open, like, oh my God, it just smells of plants. I just love that. I love it. And of course, I've been doing the Radiance, which is the collagen, and it's a vegan collagen, which is amazing because I am an animal rights activist. I do not believe we should be eating animal products. So I'm so happy that there's finally a collagen that is good for me to use because it's vegan all right you guys any other questions you have about the yoga fever or anything like that please leave them down in the comment section below once again please remember to join angie and me tomorrow morning thursday at 10 a.m for our live as we talk about the barbie movie and all the junk conspiracies all right you guys i hope you're having a wonderful wonderful day and i will talk to you all soon bye everybody